Hello, everybody. I'm Julie Wallen, and I'm the APHIS Veterinary Services Program Coordinator for our Farm Bill programs. And I'm here today with Melinda Springer, our Management Analyst, and we're providing a webinar that is information on tips for writing NAD prep proposals. So this is a, a webinar that will provide you with information for when you're submitting a proposal for an open funding opportunity for the National Animal Disease Preparedness and Response Program. So today we're going to cover a little bit about this year's funding opportunity and a little bit about the funding priorities. And then Melinda is going to go into some more details about um, how the proposals are selected and common reviewer concerns and also a lot of information on how to create your work plan and tips for success. So first we want to cover just a little bit of the basic information about this year's 2021 National Animal Disease Preparedness and Response Program funding opportunity. In this funding opportunity, APHIS Veterinary Services is providing up to $10 million to support projects that clearly and directly support one of the three 2021 NAD prep funding priorities. And those priorities are described in the funding opportunity announcement that's available on the APHIS NAD prep website. Individual applicants can submit more than one proposal and proposals will be selected through a competitive review process that will include USDA and external subject matter expert reviewers. Individual awards can range anywhere from $25,000 up to $500,000. We expect the projects that are awarded funds during this round of funding will start between January 15th and March 1st, but we do have some flexibility to meet individual program needs. So we could start projects earlier or later, depending on the specific needs for that project. We also expect projects to, to be completed in two years or less. Remember that application packages this year for the NAD prep funding opportunity are due by midnight on August 6, 2021. So $10 million for NAD prep projects sounds like a lot of money, but you have to keep in mind that there are a lot of different states, tribes, universities, and livestock industry organizations and others who are competing for these funds. And we expect to receive many strong proposals. We typically award about 40 to 50 projects per year and the average award amount is about $170,000. And the reviewers, when they're going through the proposals that are received, they're really looking for those proposals that provide high value relative to cost. So now I'm going to cover this year's funding priorities, and I'm going to discuss this really briefly. But as I said earlier, you can find the detailed description of the funding priorities for the 2021 NAD prep funding opportunity on the APHIS NAD prep website. And those are available in the funding opportunity announcement and also in the frequently asked questions about the 2021 funding opportunity. So both of those are available on the NAD prep website. So our first tip for writing proposals is that you really need to read the funding priorities in the funding opportunity announcement carefully and especially read the specific topics that are listed under each priority and make sure that your proposal strongly, directly and clearly addresses one of the funding priorities. Because we know that proposals that do directly address those specific topics will be scored higher. So the three funding priorities for 2021 in the NAB prep program are first, we're looking for projects that will develop or, and or enhance state and tribal foreign animal disease vaccination plans that will help us improve the nation's animal disease outbreak response capabilities. The second funding priority topic are projects that will support animal movement decisions in an FAD outbreak. And that includes a couple of different kinds of projects that again, you should read about in the funding opportunity announcement. It includes projects that will help um, states and tribes make consistent decisions about allowing animal movement in a large scale, scale animal disease outbreak, and also projects that are looking at cleaning and disinfection of trucks, trailers, and other transportation assets. And the third funding priority for this year 
are we're looking for projects that will strengthen outreach and education on animal disease prevention, preparedness, and response topics to specific audience audiences. So now I want to go into some detail on how NAD prep proposals are selected and some common concerns that our reviewers have with proposals. So this is intended to give you some insight into what reviewers are looking for so that when you go to prepare your proposal, you can keep these things in mind. So the first thing I wanna cover is, our, or in our next tip is to read and understand the criteria that the reviewers use to score proposals. So we wanna make sure that your proposal includes the information that supports the scoring criteria. So a little bit more about this. The NAD prep proposals that we receive will be reviewed by a team of subject matter experts who are nominated by APHIS or by the NAD prep consultation board. So this will include USDA experts and also experts external to USDA. Um, these are all experts in the funding priority topic areas. And these reviewers will use standardized criteria to recommend what proposals to fund and what funding levels for each proposal. So that review team is gonna use a set of standardized criteria to score each of the proposal. And again, it's important to keep these in mind as you develop your proposal. So the first criteria is, does the project proposal have a clear, strong and direct link to one or more of the funding priority topics. So does it really support that funding priority topic? The second criteria is, does the project proposal address one or more critical needs that directly relate to the funding priority topic? And does the project address an important problem or gap? So it has to be both um, aligned with the funding priority topic and also your proposal should address a critical need that's related to that topic. The third criteria that the review team will use to evaluate the proposals is feasibility of success. And this includes a couple of different factors. It includes, um, has the project proposal been carefully thought out in its methods and approach? Are the deliverables from the project clear? Does the project proposal describe a reasonable timeline and a budget? And does it consider key partnerships for success? And lastly, feasibility will also include an assessment of the skills and experience of the applicants. So in your work plan template, you'll have an opportunity to provide all these different factors that the reviewers use to assess the feasibility of the project. The fourth review criteria is the impact and value of the deliverables and outcomes from the project to stakeholders. So what kind of impact and value will stakeholders perceive when this project is completed? The fifth review criteria is cost effectiveness. And that includes looking at um, whether or not the project finds cost savings in different places, whether the cost seems reasonable relative to the value of the deliverable and outcomes, and other things like um, just sort of a prudent use of government resources. And the last criteria is whether, whether or not the project proposal uses best practices and or it includes some innovative approaches. So these are the review criteria. And again, these are things to keep in mind as you're developing your project proposal. So now I'm gonna cover just a few things that we hear reviewers talk about a lot in terms of what makes a really good and successful project proposal. The first one, as we've been saying throughout this is, does the project clearly and directly tackle one of the specific funding priority topics that are listed in the funding opportunity announcement? Another key factor for success is whether or not the project clearly describes what it is going to produce or deliver and what tangible benefits those deliverables are gonna have for specific groups of stakeholders. So be very clear in describing what your project is going to produce or deliver. Another success factor is that very successful projects are those that have an executive summary and a list of objectives that provide the reviewers with a very clear picture of what the project intends to accomplish and why it's important. 
So take care in developing your executive summary and your list of objectives. Some other common success factors are shown here. Um, reviewers often look to see whether the approach that is proposed for the project is logical and whether it's clear what activities will be done and how the different action steps that are listed in the proposal will lead to the final deliverables and the outcomes that will impact the problem. Reviewers also look to see whether project costs are reasonable relative to the value and impact of the project. And they also look to see whether investigators who are developing the proposal are leveraging similar work done by other entities or how the project can build on existing resources or existing knowledge that's already available. And lastly, the reviewers find that successful projects are those that describe partnerships that are likely to add to the project success. So for example, um, a project conducted by a university that includes outreach to industry organizations or a project conducted by a state that has some outreach to a university or a tribe or to um, a producer organization and so on. So those partnerships tend to um, add to the score of an overall project. All right, so those are some of the common success factors. Now I'm going to describe a few things that we see as problem areas and more common mistakes in project proposals. So um, one problem that reviewers have or that might cause a project proposal to get a lower score is if, it's on, if the project is focused on a topic that's tangential to the funding priority topics that the program is targeting for funding this year. A second common mistake is if the project seems to target an important problem, but the reviewers find that it's not very clear how the approach or deliverables will directly address or impact the problem. A third common mistake area is that the project just seems to the reviewers to be too expensive relative to its perceived value or impact. And in that case, the reviewers may decide that they would rather recommend funding several lower cost projects rather than funding one more expensive project. And the last sort of common mistake that we often see is that the project does not appear to be leveraging resources and knowledge that's already available to address the problem or address the critical need that the project is focusing on. So these are some common mistakes and just things to keep in mind as you develop your project proposal, make sure that you avoid these. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Melinda and Melinda's gonna step you through all the specific details of how to stand up your proposal and how to create a really successful NAD prep project proposal. So Melinda. Thank you, Julie. So like Julie said, next I'll be walking you through how to get started preparing a NAD prep proposal and a project work plan. So if you think you're ever going to apply for a farm bill fund for farm bill funding of any kind, we strongly encourage you to do this pre work to avoid obstacles or delays during the application process. The first one would be obtain a DUNS number. If you don't already have a DUNS, a DUNS number, you can apply for one on the Dunn and Bradstreet website using the link provided on this slide. Register with SAM. This includes a new SAM requirement. Be sure to complete the financial assistance certification report. It could take up to two weeks for your account to show up in other federal systems. So we encourage you to take this step ahead of time. Create an e-authentication account. Once you have, the, have completed the first two steps, you'll have the information you need to create this account. And lastly is establish an EasyFed grant account. This is the system that USDA uses to manage cooperative agreements and grants. So next we'll dive right into the, to the work plan. A quick tip, the work plan is the meat of your proposal. The review panel will use this to assess your proposal, especially the executive summary and the objectives. A well-organized, logical, and complete work plan will yield a higher score during the review process. 
work plans should not exceed 25 pages total. These are the different parts of the application that must be included with your proposal when it's submitted. Today, we're gonna to focus on the work plan piece. All of these forms can be found on the NAB Prep website. So again, the work plan template is on the NAB Prep website, um, and you can also access, access it using this active hyperlink on the slide. We strongly suggest the template be used, but if it's not, all the information requested in the template must be included with the proposal when it's submitted. So these are the various sections of the work plan. Today, we'll focus on a few sections that we feel might help you when developing your work plan. Each work plan must include a project title. The project title should be brief, but clearly state your project focus and give the reader an idea of what you plan to accomplish with, accomplish with your proposal. We suggest that you include your target priority, commodity, state, or audience when appropriate. Also included in the work plan is an executive summary. Your executive summary should Briefly describe the problem or need, desired goal, outcome, and solutions anticipated with your proposal. It should be clear, concise, and relevant, and hopefully jargon-free, and must summarize the project objectives. Please limit your executive summary to, 20, to 250 words or less. Again, please limit your executive summary to 250 words or less. So a few additional tips. Um, write it last and make it stand on its own to capture the reader, reader's attention. Boil it down as much as possible. Start with a bang and keep things positive. And don't repeat information, less is more. So select your language carefully when developing your executive summary. When writing your project objectives, make them smart. Use plain, simple language for quick scanning and easy understanding. Use action words to describe what you will be doing or achieving. Use dates and numbers to, quant to quantify your objectives. So on the screen is an example of a weak objective and a smart objective. If you need additional help, we suggest searching the internet for examples of or what are smart objectives. There's a wealth of information out there on writing these objectives. Each section of the work plan is a building block that paints a picture of your proposal. With your approach, list the major milestones or benchmarks for each objective. Be sure to include how you plan to reach each milestone and ultimately complete each objective. All budget items must be justified and clearly linked to the project objective. Your work plan should strongly and clearly show how you will address or impact a critical need related to the funding priority topic. So keep this in mind when you're, when you're creating your work plan. What target audience will be impacted by this project or what value does this project deliver to a target audience? This information will be used to critique proposals for rating. Clearly state who will be impacted and what value your proposal will have on this type of audience. Does this project relate to other existing projects? If it does, describe the relationship and how your project supports the existing project. Will your project expand, complement, or leverage other work that's being done or underway? Will you need APHIS assistance to complete this project? If so, please include your needs in the APHIS personnel assistance section of the work plan. Will you need AVIC, field staff, or NVSL support? Remember, the national stockpile is not available for projects.
Describe what funds you need to complete your project. Is the cost reasonable? Do you plan on using your available resources as well? Tell us your plan. All budget items in the work plan, financial plan, and SF-424 must match. Refer to the use the guidelines for use of funds for allowable and unallowable costs. It's located on the NAB Prep website as well. Remember, all budget items require a justification. This includes personnel, equipment and supplies, travel, subcontracts or agreements or awards, and in-kind contributions. So next, we'll take a closer look at some of these sections. What personnel do you need? Include positions and the role they'll play. Include names and titles. Add a justification, of course. For equipment and supplies, what type is needed and how many will be used? How many do you need? And how do you plan to dispose of it after the project ends? Remember to justify your needs here as well. Travel. Who, why, how many means of transport and lodging should all be included in the travel section. And once again, justify your needs. Who will you subcontract and why? Provide the details for subcontracts and awards. Who do you plan to subcontract and what will they be doing? What are the fees for the subcontractor award? And remember, justify, justify, justify. So this is really important and we ask that you take note. Again, your budget figure should be the same in the work plan, financial plan, and SF-424. All entries should be clearly linked to your work plan objectives. What are your performance and outcome expectations? Use quantitative and qualitative measures to describe your project, ex your project expectations. For example, how many and what type of people do you plan to train? How many events do you plan to hold? Include the number of attendees expected and the type of, atten of attendees expected. The number and type of products you plan to deliver or the number and type of people that you plan to survey. These, these are some examples of the types of information that you should be including in the performance and outcome section. So another quick tip. Reviewers are tasked with ensuring government funds are well spent. Keep this in mind and think about your proposal. What do you have and what do you need to be successful? Proposals that are well written, clear and easy to follow score better during the review process. And don't wait until the last minute. Proposals submitted after the deadline of August 6 will not be considered for funding, no exceptions. So that concludes, this concludes our presentation. Um, we want you to know that we're here to help you. So contact us with additional questions using our NAB prep email address that's shown on the screen. It's vs.nadprp at usda.gov. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good afternoon.